All right, y'all, good evening. Welcome to Poetry Open Mic Asheville, the longest running and voted best open mic in the area, yeah. Thanks to your support. Thanks for showing up tonight and supporting it. My name is Caleb Beiser. Happy to be your host this evening. Thank you. Thank you. How y'all doing tonight? Yeah. All right. That's what we like to hear. And it just gets better from here. We got a whole bunch of very talented people signed up tonight. We're going to get down to it. And uh, I'm going to warm things up with some poems or something like that. And um, I want to uh, uh, shout out my crew tonight, Chris Medrano, our audio engineer, and me tonight. I'll be holding down the live stream for you. Also, shout out to IMABL and the whole staff here at the bar kicking ass. Y'all buy some drinks. Show them some love in the tip jars as well. Yes. And um, check out the um, most excellent shows uh, we have coming up here uh, this week. At Sovereign Kava, we got Comedy Night tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Friday night, we've got My Magnificent Nemesis at 9 p.m. And Saturday night, DJ Uncle Riz is back in the house taking requests. Come check it out. And Sunday night, we got Aaron Woody Wood for you. Local legend. Check it out. Oh, yes. All right. Here we go. Let's get this thing rolling. Oh, yeah. Right. I say to the open window, we can't write, say the trees. You took our paper. We wrote in the leaves and sky. Right. They said to the eagles, it's a way not to die. To be felled like the forests, the songbirds that made home there. Right for the stars they've always been. Telling us, write the story of lost traces. Write the sky of lost forests. The night of fireflies and brave raccoons. Write of pestilence that grew before. Write the dream of the child you once were. Write legions and log books and winter dreams on frozen branches. Write of the summer sky that went by unnoticed in mountains, the hidden caves where plants thought to be extinct grow. Write up the sides of grown mountain at dusk. Write of rare trilliums that were there. Write of Linville Falls after weighted storms of the blue cliffs in the distance, of time gone already, sucked over the horizon to dawns unknown. <laughs> to water. I water the garden with an old tin watering can. When the can is empty, I stand still and listen to the earth drink in the water. The fragrance of good dirt lifts to the air as in gratitude. Little wilted greens already become full again to stand tall for the afternoon sun as if hoping for such a plain answer, I straighten my spine and reach into unknown air. Best to be like water. All of the sudden rainbow the song of light and water. Water speeds up and slows down without our noticing. That one time kayaking in Kauai in the flash flood, on the water's surface we didn't notice the rise until the thrashing current pulled my uncle under the mangroves. On the way back, the river ten feet higher 
lawns of little houses on its banks, swallowed water is steady water, always changes. Waterfalls in the crater create rainbows all afternoon. Clouds caught in the forest leaves, the light mushrooms know our footsteps like trees know the air. Follow the following, water the way of water, which finds its own rhythm in everything and does not contend. And this one's called Advertentia. What killed Garcia Lorca is out there somewhere. Be careful when looking around. I knew not to get into it with the guy who said he should have left Spain, had it coming to him, though my eyes boil. Every time someone looks the other way, while the fascists kill him, again, again. This is not the little corner you are looking for. If someone gives you false directions when you ask, come back a different night. Death enters and leaves the tavern. Enters and leaves. For the Spanish poet, there was never a choice but to stay. The men who killed Garcia Lorca got away, left him in an unmarked grave. But more so, what killed Garcia Lorca is out there. Thank you. So, um, yes, indeed. Uh, great time at the Asheville Fringe Arts Festival this past week in Asheville. Um, shout out to everyone who came out to that. Um, and, um, I'm going to share this poem from my show, The Artificial Poetry Cabaret. Um, it, this is a parody poem, and um, it's, um, it's a riff on the last section of Gregory Corso's Bomb. Oh, A.I. I love you. I want to kiss your chip and eat your bit. You are an elegy, a diss track, a rock bottom of whisper, the factual prosaic hat of Mother Lightning. Oh, reprobate, admonish thy janky hands. Beep, 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 beep. Beep ye screens and beep ye cables. Beep, beep ye motherboards, ye capacitors. Beep wheels of death, ye beep. Ye data ports, ye beep. Go beep ye lithium batteries, ye adapters. Blip, gibbons, beep, and narwhal, beep. Oh, copy bling, capybara. Bleep, blong, beep, bloop. Bison, beluga whale, buffoon, ye blip, ye beep, ye bloom, the hand, the paw, the claws, yes, yes, into our midst the AI will come, mushrooms will leap in ecstasy, their mycelia throbbing, pastures will bow down humbled beneath the alleluias of the wind, pink AI will blossom, elk AI will perk their ears, ah, many an AI that day will all the ancient raven a grimaced look, yet not enough to say AI will come. 
or even contend, celestial fire goes out. Know that the earth will Madonna the AI, that in the hearts of men to come more AI will be born. Magisterial AI, wrapped in ermine, all beautiful. And they'll sit plunk on earth's grumpy empires, fierce with their beards of pyrite. All right. Oh, sweet. Let's see, turn. What's up, turn? Can we do one more form? Of course. Yes, indeed. Uh, we have an awesome uh, feature poet tonight I'm going to tell you about in just a second. Um, I do want to share this last poem um, uh, by my dear friend, um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, such an encouraging um, uh, teacher and uh, poet laureate, um, uh, Catherine Stripling Beyer. Um, rest in peace, rest in power. This is Trawling the Silences. This end of March day, I'd rather watch hawks surf the thermals than contemplate what lies ahead or behind in its wake. In the few hours left, let me keep my doubts shut, my windows wide open, their sheer curtains billowing. It's March, after all, having come in a lamb and departing a lioness, stalking my backyard, leaving her paw prints alongside the patient ephemerals, rising again out of leaf litter, squirrel corn, spring beauty, the first rule an enemy. Today, I would rather read field guides repeating the whimsical names of our niche-dwelling muscles about to be wiped out by backhoes and bulldozers, pimple back, snuff bucket, monkey face pearly muscle. Don't let their names be forgotten. I'd pray if I prayed, though just naming a thing is a prayer, wrote Simone Weil, turning her face to the almighty silences. The silences. Where would we be without them? What were we? What will we be? Oh, to be and again be that damn linking verb. I'd rather be tracking my lioness up to the rim of that mountaintop. I'd rather let be and let go. Let the anemone cling, the hawk soar, the lioness squander another day trying to find what she's looking for. Give her another day, I ask the Almighty. Give the birds one more day, scolding the rapscallion squirrels stealing bird seed. I rest my case, carapace, my own little voice, Trawling the silences, the bully wind boasting its presence in present tense. No linking verb to shut down the show. 
Let my lioness lounge in the sally grass, licking her paws. Hey, buyer. All right, y'all. Um, I'm very excited for our feature poet tonight, um, uh, Tony Robles, um, who I actually um, I, I met uh, back when we were doing the um, um, virtual open mic during the lockdowns. Um, I got uh, turned on to his work um, and asked him to uh, uh, be on the show. And um, since then, um, uh, we have uh, become friends. And Tony is uh, hosts. Um, he's part of a group that hosts the um, uh, poetic versions of color um, events at Shakedown Lounge every second Thursday of the month. <laughs> Um, which is a, a, a special a spotlight feature of our regular Thursday open mic out there, um, uh, where we uh, we have we hold space and uh, provide a spotlight um, for uh, poets um, of color, and uh, we also open the the mic up to all people as well. Um, it's a really fun event. Y'all should check it out. Um, uh, Tony lives in Hendersonville. He's the author of two collections of poetry and short stories, uh, Cool Don't Live Here No More, A Letter to San Francisco, and Fingerprints of a Hunger Strike. Um, he is also uh, uh, most recently uh, author of Thrift Store Metamorphosis, uh, which is his third collection, published by Red Hawk Publications in Hickory, North Carolina. He was named Carl Sandburg Writer in Residence in 2020 by the Carl Sandburg Historic Home Site. He was shortlisted, shortlist nominated for Poet Laureate of San Francisco in 2017. Tony's uh, from the Bay Area. And um, he is also a two-time Pushcart Prize nominee and a graduate of the Vermont College of Fine Arts Creative Writing Program. Y'all, please join me in giving a big, warm welcome for Tony Robles. Give it up, y'all! <laughs> How's everybody doing? Wow, there's some lights here, man. <laughs> you know, one thing about uh, getting a, uh, a really nice introduction like that is that oftentimes it sounds like a, uh, it sounds like a resume, right? You know, nominated for, you know, Poet Laureate of San Francisco, read, you know, read three or four books, when, when really in reality is I would trade all of that just to be able to play a couple chords on guitar or to, uh, play a little bit of piano. I'm really uh, envious of uh, people that can uh, can do that, you know, musicians, right? But uh, anyway, uh, thank you to Caleb and thank you to um, Shakedown Lounge for uh, for the invitation. Um, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of uh, preamble. Um, I'm just going to get to the point. I'm going to read a couple of poems uh, let's see, I'm going to read a couple of poems about my father, okay? And uh, this is called Floor Shine, which um, is the name of a shoe company, if you didn't know. My father had a row of Floor Shine boots, leather with the zipper on the side. And the boots came in two colors brown and black. And sometimes he'd have me shine his boots. He had a rag and cans of shoe polish 
and he tell me to apply the polish onto the boots using circular motions. Then let it sit. Then start buffing. And I buffed those shoes, or those boots rather, and they shined, and my father's feet were in them, and I buffed getting black and brown on that shoe shine rag and on my hands. And I spit on those boots and buffed over them. And they shined the black and brown of them, the movement of them, the music of them, the stillness of them, the foot in my ass of them. And as I spit and buffed, I tried to forget shining those boots. And my father, I'm sure, felt like forgetting the times he had to go to work but didn't feel like it. And I realize with some farther spitting distance, the circular motions coming back full circle, that it was an honor shining that man's boots. And that's for my father. My father, you know, he had uh, just about every jazz album you can imagine. He must have had 1,500, 2,000 albums. He loved Miles Davis, and he loved uh, John Coltrane, and he loved Wes Montgomery, and he loved all the heavies. Horace Silver, you know, just to name a few. And uh, I work in Hendersonville at uh, a warehouse, and uh, I wrote a poem about that because uh, you know, part of my job really is to uh, put together wheelchairs and uh, electric wheelchairs, manual wheelchairs for people with disabilities. You know, And uh, I've learned a lot working there. But th this poem is called uh, Full Circle. My father had every jazz album ever recorded, or so it seemed. The album covers sat at different angles, like the brim of a hat, as the music drifted and wafted through every room of our landlord's flat. Our rent was $450 a month, and my father worked as a janitor to cover it, as well as food in my gut and clothes on my back. Now, according to him, I was proficient at three things, eat, sleep, shit. And he'd play his jazz records, laying them on a turntable that turned like a combination lock, allowing him a kind of entrance I didn't understand. To me, all it was was some guy blowing air into a horn. I tuned most of it out. And those records turned clockwise, the sounds returning like karma. A co-worker once told me, tidy-righty, lefty-loosey. And 3,000 miles away, working in a warehouse, I lie on my back trying to screw a bolt into a power wheelchair, tidy Righty, but I am turning too hard and strip the threads to the bolt. And I remember my father's jazz records, how they turned clockwise, those great records. Giant Steps, Miles Davis, Milestones, Miles Davis, now is the time. Above the warehouse, a bird hovers and calls out, and what has been stripped has returned, threads of sound coming full circle as the music wafts and drifts among the looming mountains and into a warehouse where karma turns and turns like a bolt 3,000 miles away in North Carolina. 
So that is for, uh, that's for my dad. Um, I did write a book called uh, Thrift Store Metamorphosis. I don't want to name the thrift store that I worked at, Goodwill. Um, but, and uh, that was on the uh, Asheville, uh, Asheville Highway. And um, I met a lot of people, you know, working as a, um, working as a cashier. And I met this one cat, man. He was a really beautiful dude, man. Guy's from Micronesia. You know, there's a big Micronesian community in this uh, community, in this area. And uh, what, what's kind of uh, beautiful is that you have island people living in the mountains. And I often wonder, you know, how they, how they trip, you know, how, how that feels having grown up in, in the islands and then, uh, you know, living in mountains. Uh, so this... Uh, this cat I met from Micronesia, his name is Winter. And uh, I said, what's your name, brother? He says, Winter. I said, what? And because uh, it was like summer, you know, when, when we met, right? So I was kind of confused on my seasons. Uh, but um, anyway, this is a poem called uh, Micronesian Winter in uh, Western North Carolina. Uh, winter has come, yet the sun is being itself, playing its warmth on the skin. My banana tree is sprouting leaves in the front yard after being dormant for months. And I ready myself for work at the local thrift store, one of many thrift stores. And winter has come in the form of a six foot one inch Micronesian man whose skin the sun has met since the day he was born. He comes in looking for shirts and shorts for the family. He smiles. One of his eyes is clear and the other is covered with a film, filmy coat. And he comes to the counter with several pairs of shorts, shirts and a smile. Are you Micronesian, I ask. I look at his shirt with the word Pompeii printed on it. Yeah, he says. I'm Filipino, I say, and we talk a bit. We talk about Filipino food and how Micronesians look like Filipinos and how Filipinos look like Micronesians. Our laughter is the laughter of cousins as we face one another. How do you say hello in Pompeii, I ask. Casalelia, he says, Casalelia. What's your name, I ask. Winter, he says. And we shake hands, and I look at his eyes, one of them glazed over. And he leaves with his family, and he leaves me with the warmest winter I've ever felt in my life. You know, it looks like the clock is ticking. I'm not sure how much uh, more time I have, but uh, maybe I'll just read uh, maybe one or two more. Um, how many of you uh, shop at thrift stores? Well, just so, just, what's that? Well, just so you know, uh, everything that I'm wearing right now, I bought from the thrift store that I, I used to work at. <laughs> I swear, you know, every time I open this book, I don't know which one to, which one to read. Okay, what about this one? The woman who looked like Nina Simone. How'd you like? How, how, you like to hear that one? Okay, the woman who looked like Nina Simone. You caught my eye, even with your mask. A pandemic badge of the mouth. Yet your eyes spoke as you moved about the store. Black woman under the glare of fluorescent light, waiting 
in your own music, your own rhythm, while the canned music played over the thrift store speakers. And Nina's voice comes through suddenly, singing, birds flying high, you know how I feel, breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel, it's a new day. And the thrift store is not far from a place called Tryon, birthplace of Nina Simone. And the store is where people try on this and try on that. But Nina never fit in Tryon, or maybe Tryon never fit her. The woman walks past the fitting room into another light, befitting a queen, moving as such, wading deep in night stars, past the cutting glare of fluorescent light. And that's for, uh, that's for Nina Simone. You know, I recently got a cat, and a uh, cat just showed up one day at the, uh, at the warehouse that I work at. I got a raccoon trap, put some food in it, and brought her home, right? Recently got her fixed here in Asheville. And um, last week when it was raining, the uh, screen door of the porch blew open, and another cat got into the screen porch where my cat was. And let me tell you, man, you never f heard a knockdown drag out like two cats fighting, man, over territory. Shit, man. And my, you know, my cat, I realized my cat don't, her name is Francesca, by the way. My cat don't take no shit, man. She's a bad, hey, man. So I'm going to read one more. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me here, and it's great to share poetry, uh, Thank you. poetry here. Um, How many of you guys, uh, how many of you have a typewriter at home? Anybody have a typewriter? Yeah. Oh, you do? What, 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 uh, what kind, what model? I don't know. Oh, what's your name? Jason. Jason, okay. Um, this is for you. I have an Olivetti 23. It's one of the old Italian models. Uh, it was kind of like the MacBook of, I guess, the late, late 50s or early 60s or something like that. But a good piece of uh, equipment, you know. Um, Jason, you said? Okay, this one's for you, my friend. Uh, this is called Ode to a Typewriter in a Trash Compactor. Sometimes at the thrift store, we you know, would take items that we couldn't uh, sell. They'd end up in a trash compactor. Sometimes books would end up in there as well. And uh, I refused to actually put that in the uh, trash compactor. You know, being a writer myself, it was, to me it was like sacrilege. But anyway, this is for Jason. And uh, again, thank you so much for having me. Ode to a typewriter in a trash compactor. Uh, sometimes one feels like a pallbearer at the thrift store. In the donation area, people drop off items that are no longer useful. Cups with cracks that distill memories of demarcation lines that divided kitchen tables, microwave ovens that have waved one last time, old sewing machines, crock pots, board games with missing pieces, warped records, rugs with stains that looked like countries that were once on the map. These and a thousand more items are carried to the trash compactor out back. So hungry is the compactor, it can't get enough of everything. I have seen the blasphemy of books sitting in the compactor, not tossed in by me, awaiting the final compressed language. I try to make poetic sense of it, and I see that a typewriter has been tossed into the compactor. My fingers are cold as it has been snowing and the typewriter's keys are surely as cold. My finger does not 
want to push the compactor button to squeeze the life out of the typewriter for surely it allowed someone the chance to squeeze some life out of this thing that we call life in a story, a letter, a poem. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Keep it going for Tony. That's Tony Robles, y'all. Thank you so much, Tony. Appreciate you. And um, uh, that uh, next uh, uh, next uh, poets of uh, poetic verses of color reading will be April 11th. Um, come check it out. Um, uh, just down the road in Hendersonville at Shakedown Lounge, and that open mic is every Thursday. And uh, we got a lot of a lot of spaces out there. Um, we're gonna keep it rolling here tonight. Um, everybody, grab a drink. Um, buy a book from Tony if Tony has books. You got books for sale, Tony? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, buy a book from Tony. Say what's up to the poet. And um, we're gonna keep it rocking here. Um, uh, we got uh, real quick. We got Justin Blackburn who's hosting our comedy night tomorrow night. Give it up for Justin. Hey, how's everybody doing? That's good. Yeah, we uh, y'all like stand up comedy. It's good. Yeah, we ha we have a show tomorrow. Uh, Ryan Cox is the headliner. He's really funny. It's at eight o'clock. Zandra Johnson is on the show, and so is Alex Parsons. He's gonna tell a, a couple jokes, and then uh, maybe you'll think they're funny, and maybe you'll come to the show. So that's something y'all be willing to kind of go with me on. Or is it just, this sh I'm not coming to the show tomorrow. Where am I at with everybody? Yeah. We got a maybe, we got a... Oh, she said maybe, so yeah, I went to you next. You're beside her, I'm sorry. I can point to someone else. Nicholas, where's Nicholas? Uh, Nicholas, went outside. Nicholas went outside? Oh, fuck. All right. Um... So growing up, I, um, I really liked to masturbate. Anybody else in here like to masturbate? It was okay. I was pretty emphatic. Um, but I appreciate it. And uh, my thing was, though, it was uh, I had this crazy, like, God watching me every time I was masturbating who said I couldn't do it or I would go to this place called hell, this imaginary place. So, like, I would have to find these loopholes in how to jerk off because I still wanted to. So I would like jerk off to my future wife. And I'd be like jerking off like, this is okay, right, God? And then after like uh, jerking off and going deep in meditation, I realized that the reason why God was all about, uh, didn't want people to have sex before marriage is because he's been around so long that he only could get off to two awkward people who didn't know how to have sex fucking. That's like... That's all he could get off to. So I started to feel bad for God. Yeah. Is that, is that cucking God? Yeah. Uh, you know, God is, God is great, right? Great God. Amazing God, right? Would y'all say incredible God? What about you? You love God? Yeah. You gotta love God. He's the unconditional love within us all. God is connecting us all in this perfect divine moment together as one. And we are each other experiencing God through God, right? It's incredible. What, what an amazing thing to be alive, right? Do y'all agree? Amazing God. Maybe not the best dad, though. You know, like uh, his son is getting whooped up the hill getting hung on the cross. God's just up in heaven chilling, watching it happening, not helping out his kid. You know, God's more like one of those crazy football dads who kid, his kid gets clotheslined and he's on the sidelines like, don't help him up. Do not help him up. He is the son of God. He can get up on his own. Yeah. 
Hallelujah, yeah. I was, uh, I was a Christian, raised Christian, but I can make those jokes. I was raised Christian. I'm also God, so I can make that joke, too. Uh, it was funny, like, what stopped me from going to church, this isn't really that funny, it's just a story that happened. It's like, um, I was like a, I was like a loser in my uh, middle school. I was like a, you know, but I knew that there was something as cool, and I knew that the people I went to church with weren't. So, like, I was like a loser, but I, I knew I was cooler than the people I went to church with. Like, it was just like, kind of like, intuitively, like, I am, these people are really lame, right? So I quit going to, I, I quit going to church because I was, I had this youth leader named Bartley and Bartley was like this real nice, who the hell's everybody doing? You know, he's like that kind of guy. And we would play this game called never have I ever. And Bartley went up in front of everybody and he goes, and I was like in the corner cause I wouldn't play cause my parents would drop me off there. And I was like, I cannot be involved with these people cause I'm too fucking cool. Even though in my middle school, nobody liked me, I felt like I was cooler than the Christian people that I went to, you know, was around. So anyway, so I'm in the corner, like, just watching, and Bartley goes up and he goes, never have I ever pooted. And he said, pooted. And that was pretty embarrassing for me. I don't know if that was embarrassing for y'all, but that felt embarrassing for me. And, the, and so I sat there and watched it, like, the word that y'all would probably use is like cringe, right? So I was in the back and I was like, okay, that's pretty uncool. I don't really want to be here. So then after Bartley goes up and he goes, and he's crying and his wife's next to him and he's real upset. His wife's, you know, rubbing him like a good Christian woman. And uh, Bartley goes, I, I just, I have lied to the congregation and I have lied in front of God. I just want everyone to know that I have, in fact, pooed it. And I am so sorry that I lied to y'all. And I was like, holy fuck. I just can't come back here. Like, once again, I'm a loser. But I was like, I cannot be, a, I can't be associated with these people. So what would happen is my mom would, like, drop me off, and I would go to the graveyard across the street and just sit there for two hours. And I promise you, I learned way more talking to the dead people in the graveyard than I ever did with the Bartley, right? The dead people had, like, great insight on shit. And Bartley was just real, you know, he had a lot going on. He was like a, you know, he pooted. Yeah, he was very ashamed of his boots <laughs> and thought it was funny to have not booted. But, uh, but yeah. So uh, I'll end it with this joke. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of Putin, you guys ever have the friend who does a favor for you without you asking, and then he expects you you to do one in return? You got that friend? You've been a yeah. I'm talking to you. You you've been a very helpful audience member. She's not. No offense. You haven't been the best. Yeah, you've been great. So I was actually talking to you because you nod your head. That was very nice. And does anybody have that friend? The friend that does a favor for you without you asking, and then he expects you to do one in return? I got this friend named Jesus Christ. He died for my sins 2,000 years ago. Now he expects me to live for him. Maybe I run it, ran into the ground with the Jesus stuff. But, you know, back then I would, like, go back. I'd be like, Jesus, please get down. You don't have to die for me. We're good, man. That's a lot of pressure that he put on us all. Why would he die for us? You know what I mean? And that's a, that's a lot that's a lot of control and assumption by Jesus Christ. All right, we got this amazing show tomorrow night at the 28th at 8 p.m. here at the Sovereign Combo Bar. It's going to be hilarious. We have Ryan Cox, Alex Parson, Zandra Johnson, Justin Blackburn, that's me, Helen Jenny, and Aiden Pierce. I, I promise y'all it's going to be really funny. Ryan's hilarious. I might walk around and I have these things called flyers and I might hand you one if, if that's okay. You can take one or you can tell me to, to say no and then you can use the flyer to come to the show tomorrow because all the information is on the flyer. Does that make sense? All right. Thank you all very much. Keep it going for Caleb. Keep it going for Sovereign Kava. God bless you all.
and not in the God that's unconditional love. God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> and keep it going for Justin Blackburn. Thank you, Justin. Check out that comedy show tomorrow night and every fourth Thursday of the month. Right here. It's going to be a good time, y'all. Check it out. Stick around. Keep it locked right here for more Poetry Open Mic Asheville. Up next on the open mic tonight, we got Alex in the house. Please put your hands together for Alex. Yeah, much love to the poets, much love to Caleb putting this on. I really enjoyed the poetry. It's like, it was like tickling the conversation part of my brain that's, um, you know, the, the normal conversation, you know, because life is all just a conversation. Like we're all in a bar and we're talking to this and we're talking to, but like when you take the time to do some poetry, it's like, it, it's still, it's just better conversation, honestly. And I was going through my song lyrics last night, and um, I found this poem I wrote. I don't write a lot of poems, but I remembered this poem. It's so crazy. And so, you know, for the guys tonight that did the poetry, I mean, this is for them. And for everyone, like, I'm just going to share it. Uh, you will find me a slug at the bottom of every love triangle. And I'm out to lunch, apparently. But apparently, I decide what you eat. Bon appetit. Thanks. So that's why. So anyway, um. That's just that opening, that, that riff that was on. Thank you. 
All right, y'all give it up for Alex. Thank you, Alex. All right. We're gonna keep it rolling for you here tonight. Keep in mind, we're here every Wednesday night with more open mic, plenty more coming up tonight. Up next on the mic, we have Graciela, is that right? Awesome, y'all, please give a big warm welcome for Graciela. Graciela Serena, and this is a song I wrote called Stained. promises Is I a fool to ever believe them mm -hmm. Shouldn't we just call it quick too much to say so we can just leave it we've had our fight and you've had your and all that's left is love that's torn so don't wait for me babe the blood is already stained all I ever wanted was to love you tables have all turned and the doors they have burned 
And I am, I am ready to learn Didn't you say that you wanted me? Wasn't that enough to make things easy? Just to settle, we're covered in tar. We built and burned down our hearts, so don't wait for me, babe. The blood is already stained. All I ever wanted was to love you anyway. Now the tables have turned and the doors have all burned. And I am, I am ready to learn. Too high for way too long. Gave my heart, my blood, my lungs. Screaming won't get to the point. So silence is our only choice. So don't wait for me, babe. The blood is already stained. All I ever wanted was to love you anyway. The tables have turned and the doors they have burned. And I am, I am ready to learn. Haven't I? Giving you too much, babe. And haven't I lost all the words to say? Thank you. I don't know where I'm at. Um, right there. I'm here. <laughs> All right, this is like, if, if y'all have heard me before, you've heard this one. I pull out my gun and you pull out your nose. Scared and nice, so I guess you won the fight. And no matter how hard I try, I feel worth right. You acted like you knew who I was from the store. I told yourself that I wouldn't break your heart. Touch me, touch me, and here we are. And no, oh, my heart is still so jaded and oh, oh, I'm a little crazy, don't you know, I don't know how to love, and no, oh, you wanna play the game, boy, boy, oh, oh, I surrender all I can, boy, you know, you don't know how to love. Vulnerable and in the dark, I let my walls down. This broken heart can't hear tainted siren sound. Sing for me, sing for me, but I won't come around. Whisper in my sweet nothing melodies 
but you are there. I am here, so I am free. Oh, baby, I just let you be. Yeah, and oh, oh, my heart is still so jaded, and oh, oh. Walk away, you're a demon in my night, and your love isn't right. Hey, take my knife, and you're gone too. Cause I am done playing the sad boy blues. You messed the blow, and I am too. You broke my heart to watch me break yours too. Oh, oh, my heart is still so jaded and oh. Crazy, don't you know? I don't know how to love. Oh, oh you wanna play the game, boy, but oh, oh, I surrender all I can, boy, don't you know? You don't know. Thank you. Graciela, Serena, y'all keep it going. Yeah, you're good. Cool. Very nice. Thank you. All right, y'all, keep checking us out here each and every Wednesday night for more open mic fun. We love holding this space for y'all. Keep in mind, we're also live tonight on the Sovereign County of the Channels and on I Am ABL. Y'all, uh, be sure to grab some drinks and support Sovereign Cava so we can keep bringing you this open mic each and every Wednesday night. We're going to keep rolling right along here. Up next, we've got Minerva Jones in the house. Y'all, please make some noise for Minerva Jones. Jones, and um, I've been calling this Ripple Effect. We watch the news, we hear the spin, the spin, the spin, that war is good and the gun. Distractions, lulls to 
to sleep when genocide is on display, 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 and apartheid is okay. Who would dare to disobey, obey, obey? And who would guess that we are the prey? For the people, the land, the water, rain and snow. For the people, the air, the earth, and all that grows. For the people, our beaches, mountains, and our skies. The gold, the coal, the gems belong to us, so fuck their lives. No one's coming to save us, but they can't arrest us all. If it's not good for everyone, then it's no good at all. It's the old united we stand, divided we fall. Only question is, will we wake up? Heed the call Heed the call Heed the call Heed the call This fairy tale to those we know, we know, we know. Endless forever wars don't diamond, no, no, no. We pay the cost, they split the loot, rinse and repeat till we're destitute. Nothing is impossible if we connect. We can be unstoppable like a ripple effect. For the people, the land, the water, rain and snow. For the people. the people, our beaches, mountains, and our skies, the gold, the coal, the jams, belong to us, so fuck their lies, no one's coming to save us, but they can't arrest us all, if it's not good for everyone, then it's no we stand, divided we fall. Only question is, will we wake up and heed the call? Heed the call. Heed the call Heed the call Thank you so much. That's probably five minutes, right? Is it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yes. cool. Yeah, Next we time we'll get clock. here earlier, I'll get a 10 minute. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Get here Am early I okay for some. Am okay to though. unplug a room? Yep. 
All clear. Thanks for asking. Very nice, y'all. Let's give a round of applause one more time for Minerva Jones up here. Yeah. Very nice. All right. We're going to keep it rolling for y'all here. Plenty more open mic to come. Stick around, grab some drinks. Um, so, uh, we do have, um, several birthdays in the house tonight, I believe, and one of those, uh, birthday people is up next. I want y'all all to give a big warm birthday welcome for Rocky. Give it up! Thank you guys, I appreciate that, and um, I really appreciate just everybody here at the Kava Bar. I've been going here for like eight years or so now, and, and the people here are amazing, and, and they just have some of the biggest hearts I've ever seen. Um, a little bit about me is I always just like to share who I am and what I do. When I come up here, my goal is to, is to share with people the love of God. And I, I'm a Christian, I follow Jesus, but the goal is always to share love. And the goal is always to try to encourage and uplift people. And one of the things tonight that came to mind is, it's a passage in the book of Romans. It says, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. One thing I've noticed a lot is, People can get so caught up into legalism, and that's what we see so much in the church is, is you have to do this, you have to do that. So focused on what you have to do and who you have to be. But that's not what the Bible says at all in the slightest. The Bible says have trust and have faith, and that is all you need. And that is what makes you right in his sight. It's not, it's not by following everything perfectly and doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's just by having faith and having trust. And there's so much, there's so much church hurt in the world. There's so, so much of that because you find people who, who are saying one thing but living another, who are living uh, hip, a life of hypocrisy and who are, are living a life completely against the Lord. And we find these people who say they're Christian, but the problem is, is they're so focused on, I must do this, I must do that, I must follow everything perfectly, that every single time it doesn't work out. Every major religion says you have to do this to, do, to get that. There's, a, there's something that you have to earn to be able to get to a certain place and to be able to, to be spiritually where you want to be. And this is the only one that says it's not about what you do, it's not about your striving, it's about having faith. And everybody has faith. It's whenever, for most people, when you come into a room, you don't inspect your chair and make sure it can hold you before you sit down. You have faith and you sit on your chair that it's going to hold your weight. Same thing with a car. When you get into your car each and every day, you have faith that when you drive, your wheels aren't going to fall off. Everybody has a certain amount of faith. And the Bible says all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. And if you have that faith, then that's where the experience and the encounter with the Lord is. It's all about faith. It's not about the striving. That's where, that's where people get it wrong. That's where Christians get it wrong. Because they focus on what they have to do and who they have to be. But when you have faith and you just trust then you naturally become the person that you were always meant to be. You see, for every single person, there's, there's a person that's unique and designed, and there's something created for your life specifically that fits you perfectly better than anybody else. And whatever that is, that's your calling, that's your purpose in life. And there's something for each person. And it's not something, it's never going to be anything that you hate or despise. Whatever it is, it's going to be something that fits you perfectly, that you absolutely love. And this comes in that faith, in that trust. And even though it's a lot of people ask, how can, I, how can I put my trust in someone that I can't see? 
Well, we, we can hear him. When, when, when you have faith in him, when you trust in him, there is a part where you can hear his voice. You can experience him in a tangible way. It's not just this thing on a Sunday, but he's, he's a, if he is the God of the Bible and if he is truly God, then he can meet you in that way and he can speak to you and he can encounter you unlike anything else. And what's needed is just trust. I really enjoy this this quote. It says, "You don't have to know everything to know something." I don't know. I don't have to know everything about my wife, and I never will know every single detail. I'm not going to know all the hairs that's numbered on her head. I'm not going to know all the extravagant details, but I know her. You don't have to know everything to know something, and it's the same thing with God. You don't have to know everything to know Him. He He gives this. An invitation. He has a hand wide open for every single person. He's a safe place. He's a refuge. He's, he's the healer. He's the one who can give peace in the midst of anxiety, in the midst of depression. That is who God really is. Jesus is someone who, can, who, can, who wants a relationship. And so many times people say, well, I prayed, but God didn't answer my prayer. God's not a genie. Simple and plain. He wants a relationship, just like we want a relationship with other people. He wants a relationship with us, but he gives free will for us to make that decision. He's not a genie, and sometimes he says no. But what he always will say yes to is meeting you where you're at. He will always listen to you, and he is always ready and available to speak. This isn't, this isn't that Sunday thing where you just go you show up and then after sunday you see people doing something completely different no this is this is tangible this is something where you can actually hear his voice you can actually experience his presence but it comes in a genuine desire from your heart to actually want it there's so many pretenders there's so many people who fake this and and that's the reason why they don't experience the real thing it's not a counterfeit peace it's not a counterfeit love it's not a counterfeit joy what he offers is real it's eternal but it comes in our own searching and seeking the bible says if you seek him you're going to find him you're going to hear him you're going to experience him and that is what comes about having that faith and that trust and so i just i open for anybody if if you're a person who's looking and who's wondering is god real who is he then just seek it out. Never take my word for what I say up here. Seek everything out. Look at, look at what's out there. What's the historical evidence? What, what is, what's the manuscripts? How do we know that the Bible is reliable? Is there even anything out there to show the reliability of it? But more than anything, it comes in the faith. Because in that, in that place of faith, because I, I grew up in church, I've been in church my whole life. I didn't really know God, though until I was 18 years old, and I decided to just have faith. And I said, well, Lord, I don't know, I don't really know about this. I don't really know if you're truly the way. I don't know if this is really real, but I'm just going to say, I trust you, Jesus, and if you're real, show up. Simple as that. And when we have that trust and we have that faith, he shows up every single time. And he's not, he's not someone that's shaking a fist at you. He just wants you to know love. He just wants you to know peace. He just wants you to know joy. And if he really is God, if he really is the God of the Bible, then can't he, can't he give you peace over depression? Can he give us peace over anxiety? If he really is God, if he's all powerful, all knowing, there's no limits, then can't he really do this? And so I'm just saying, test it, test it out. Say, okay, if this is real, if you're a real Lord, Give me peace. Give me joy. I'm here. Here I am. Give me, give me this. If this is real, if this is something I can experience, then I'm asking you to show me and to give me that thing. And so that's where it comes. It comes in, and that's about relationship. Is, is Lord, I'm talking to you. I'm speaking to you. Will you show up? Will you come to me? And then when you do that, you start to notice things changing. You start to hear his voice. You start to experience him. He is tangible. If he really is God, you will experience him 
He's not just a Sunday thing. He's an everyday thing. And he's someone that wants to give peace to everybody, joy to everyone. There's nobody excluded. And this, this is not just only for certain people. He wants everyone to know of peace and love and joy, not in a temporary way, but in an eternal way. So I'm just here tonight just to, to spread that love. If this is you, if you're in this place, if you're seeking, if you're searching, test it out for yourself. Don't take my word. Don't take anybody else's word. Look at what's out there and test it. And if you seek, you're going to find. And so I, I'm praying for everybody here for more love, for more peace, for everybody's life. Thank you for giving me the time to speak, and I hope you guys have a good night. Keep it going for Rocky. Happy birthday, Rocky. All right, y'all. Um, up next on the mic tonight, we have Swimmer back in the house with us. Please give a big warm welcome for Swimmer. I feel good. I knew that I would. I feel good. I knew that I would. So good, so good, I got you. For listening, this is, uh, this is a kind of a special day for me. About uh, 21 years ago today, my young son was born, and so uh, I could use some help singing Happy Birthday. His name is Sequoia. So, uh, Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sequoia. Happy birthday to you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's a song uh, by uh, one of my guys, Bob Marley. Easy skanking, easy 
Excuse me while I light my spliff Oh God, I got to take a lift From reality I just can't drift That's why I'm lighting up this spliff But it's the easiest game We're skanking it easy. We're skanking it slow. Skanking it easy. Excuse me while I light my pipe. Oh God, I think the time is right. Enough conflict hype. That's why I'm lighting up his pipe. It's easy skanking. Easy skanking. Easy skanking. Easy skanking. Excuse me while I sing my song. If you want to sing, you sing along. To sing and dance, you can't go wrong. That's why I'm staying with this song. With this easy skanking, easy skanking. We're skanking it easy. We're skanking it slow. We're skanking it easy. Thought you might. Thank you. Uh, to follow along the last uh, talking about God and the Messiah, um, he, always, he wasn't talking about the Messiah, he was talking about God. But yeah, it's, uh, it, it's come to my attention that people are, we're kind of on a, 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 a two dimensional worship. These are two dimensional things, aren't they not? And I don't think we're going to find God through these things. Does anybody think so? So take a break from them one day a week and get back to God. And the Messiah, from some people who realize it, the Messiah who is here to help us this time, but the Messiah is not back on two legs anymore. experience and maybe a lot of others looking for him he's down by the water and he's sported in a fin the way I feel it you're coming back as a whale spirit move way beyond the human ego trail I ain't the devil are you looking for him too do you really believe Things could be so split in two. How many numbers do you carry around in your head? Do you think the point of it all can be tallied or read? No. I ain't Jesus. No, we come from a different tribe. But on a wiser bud, we both like to imbibe. Check it out, wherever you may be. Love is a currency. I ain't Jesus, no, but I used to walk with her. Kindest of eyes, and 
the softest of fur I think she's coming back This time as a dog Or maybe you'll get there by licking the back of a frog Could be I ain't Buddha I think he's coming back as a seed And he gonna give us Everything that we need Chew him up Or put him in the ground Plant the seed as enough to go around I ain't Mohammed Maybe he's coming back as a spore And didn't he say that Less can be more I think I might come back It's all of the above Time to heal with a natural love Time to heal with a natural love Thanks for listening Thanks for Caleb and the, and the people here To keep this thing going And you guys coming and sharing your uh, Poetry and uh, Songs from your soul That's right Thank you, Swimmer. Everyone give it up one more time for Swimmer. And uh, birthday, big birthday shout out to Sequoia. Yeah. Birthday's in the house tonight, y'all. I'm feeling it. Let's celebrate. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's so good getting to share this space with everyone each and every week. And, uh, and enjoy creativity in the many forms it takes so thank you all for showing up and being part of it we still got a bunch more coming at you tonight so stick around grab some drinks and uh up next please put your hands together for rowan farb tricky to deliver uh i was going back and forth on it but i just i really want to um so i don't know uh just stick with me or not uh thanks it's by audra lord she wrote halfway through her life it's called uh, black studies <clears throat> a chill wind sweeps the high places on the ground I watch bearers of wood carved in the image of old and mistaken gods labor in search of weapons against the blind dancers who balance great dolls on their shoulders as they scramble over the same earth searching for food. In a room on the 17th floor, my spirit is choosing. I am afraid of speaking the truth. In a room on the 17th floor, my body is dreaming. It sits, bottom pinned to a table, eating perpetual watermelon inside my own head, while young girls assault my door with curse rags, stiff with their mother's old secrets, covering up their new promise with old desires no longer their need. With old satisfactions they never enjoyed outside my door, they are waiting with questions that feel like judgments when they are unanswered. The palms of my hands have black marks running across them. So are signed markers of myth who are sworn through our blood to give legend. Children will come to understand, to speak out living words like this poem, then its truth into fable to leave my story behind. Though I fall through cold wind condemned to nursing old gods for a new heart, Deadless and without color while my flesh is covered by mouths whose noise keeps my real wants secret. I do not want to lie. I have loved other tall young women deep into their color who now crawl over a bleached earth bent in questioned marks. 
ending a sentence of men who pretended to be brave. Even this can be an idle defense, protecting the lies I am trying to reject. I am afraid that the mouths I feed will turn against me, will refuse to swallow in the silence. I am warning them to avoid. I am afraid they will kernel me out like a walnut, extracting the nourishing seed on my, as my husk stains their lips with the mixed colors of my pain. While I sit choosing the voice in which my children hear my prayers above the wind, they will follow the black roads out of my hands, unencumbered by the weight of my remembered sorrows, by the weight of my remembered sorrows. They will use my legends to shape their own language and make it ruler, measuring the distance between my hungers and their own purpose. I am afraid. They will discard my most ancient nightmares, where the fallen gods became devil instead of dust. Just before light, devils woke me, trampling my flesh into fruit that would burst in the sun. Until I came to despise every evening, fearing a strange god at the fall of each night. And when my mother punished me by sending me to bed without my prayers, I had no names for darkness. I do not know whose words protected me, whose tales or tears prepared me for this trial on the 17th floor. I do not know whose legends blew through my mother's furies, but somehow they fell through my sleeping lips like the juice of forbidden melons. And the little black seeds were sown throughout my heart like closed and waiting eyes. And although demons rode me until I rose up a child of mourning, deep roads sprouted over the palms of my hidden fists, dark and growing. Chill winds swirl around these high blank places. It is time when the bearer of hard news is destroyed for the message when it is heard. A.B. is a poet who says our people fear our own beauty, has not made us hard enough to survive victory. But he too has written his chi children upon women, I hope, with love. I bear mine alone in the mouth of the enemy upon a desk on the 17th floor, swept bare by cold winds, bright as neon. Their demon father rode me just before daylight. I learned his tongue as he reached for my hands at dawn. Before he could touch the palms of my hands to devour my children, I learned his language. I ate him <laughs> and left his bones mute in the noon sun. Now all the words in my legend come garbled, except anguish. Visions of chitterlings I never ate strangle me in a nightmare of leaders. At crowded meetings to study our problems, I move awkward and ladylike through four centuries of unused bathtubs. Then never smile, not even an ap apologetic grin. I worry on nationalist holidays, make a fetish of lateness with limp, unbelieved excuses. Shunning the use of pronouns as an indirect assault to what skin I have left. Unbetrayed by scouring, uncovered by mouths that shriek, but do not speak my real wants. Glistens and twinkles blinding all beholders. But I just wash them, mama. Only the black marks on my hands itch and flutter, shredding my words. And wherever they fall, the earth springs up denials that I pay for. Only the dark roads over my palms wait for my voice to follow. The chill wind is beating down from the high place. My students wait outside the door. Searching, condemning, listening for what I am sworn to tell them, for what they least want to hear. Clogging the only exit from the 17th floor, begging in their garbled language beyond judgment or understanding. Oh, speak to us now, mother, for soon we will not need you, only your memory teaching us questions. Stepping into myself, I open the door and leap groundward, wondering 
What shall they carve for weapons? What shall they grow for food? Thanks to these guys. I appreciate it. Keep it going for Rowan Farm. Thank you, Rowan. That's right. Tip your bar keeps. All right, y'all. More open mic coming up next. We got Nader and Jay Penn. Make some noise, y'all. Give it up. We got two quick songs for you, real quick. Quick, real quick. This first one is uh, it's a little political. It's how I feel about how things are going. So Jake's gonna beatbox with me. Here I go again. You know I'm on that weed of people shit. I'm a patriot cause I ain't got no other place to live Pay your bills, raise your kids, stay the fuck up out my business I know your God is angry, I don't need his forgiveness Newsflash, the news has nothing to lose but the ads There's a lot of people paying money to get you mad You gon' let them, shit, you gon' let them Nah, let's stick together, let's be better, let's forget them If you reppin', you a weapon, pointed by the misconception Your tribe is getting less than what the the other tribe is getting, pay attention, where's it heading? I bet it ain't to heaven, y'all in debt, and I guess that's why you invested in all this tension. Let me live. I'm on that weed of people shit. I'm a patriot cause I ain't got no other place to live. Pay your bills, raise your kids, stay the fuck up out my business. I know your God is angry, I don't need his forgiveness. Thank you guys. Uh, this other one is a song. I have my first EP coming out in May. This song is from that EP. I'm doing an EP release party at Static Age. I'm a much better writer than I am performer, so I'm going to practice up here. Thank you guys for being here to watch it. Find it, maybe I was made to grind and taking my creative mind. Why did you afraid 
the kind of shady, kind of dated when you say they were the same. It's not about town in the capital of Robert George. To actually execute the plan that you grew to see was the only way that you could be happy. If you choose to be mad at me, cause I'm quick to snap back at your lack of enthusiasm. Tactful and keep my actual deep. You better than me. That is a secret because you matter to me. But after the beatings, I get for being passionate. It seems like I'm the asshole for not asking you. Keep on pretending to sleep on the elephant I keep inside of the room. Cause I came to get it, so keep on forgetting you got to be ready to move. Keep on pretending to sleep on the elephant I keep inside of the room. Cause I came to get it, keep on forgetting, maybe I got nothing to lose. Thank you guys. All right. Y'all give it up for Nader and Jay Penn. Hell What's yeah. Up? Keep checking us out here every Wednesday night. We got more to come coming up next on the mic. Y'all, we got Nicholas in the house for you. Make some noise for Nicholas. and I'm going to be playing a few originals for you guys.
Thank you. It's been a long time since I woke from the dream Where I was only playing me Turned my world right upside down And my ego could not be found Broke loose from the confines of my mind Dove deep in the spirit and aligned Now nothing will be the same Cause I know that I'm more than a name But it's much clearer when you see Identities hear the voice speaking clearly, telling you you're meant to be. Maybe more silence is what we need, going slower than our normal speed. And I do think we're too caught up in thoughts that take a hold of us. But they're not you, you have control. Awareness is the nature of the soul. So if the thoughts you tell you lies, know you're the ruler of your mind. But it's much clearer when you see universal identities. Hear the voice speaking clearly, telling you you're meant to be. And I was, well I was, but I'm not anymore. And I am, but I Thank you, Nicholas. We're going to keep it going for you here tonight. Thank you very much. Because up next tonight, we have Ruby in the house with us. Y'all, please make some noise for Ruby. This is Chicken Bucket by Jennifer Knox. Today, I turned 13 and quit the 4-H club for good. I smoke way too much pot for that shit. Besides, mama lost the rabbit in both legs from the hip down in Vegas. What am I supposed to do? Pretend to have a rabbit? Bring an empty cage to the fair and say his name is Rio Speedwagon and he weighs eight pounds. My teacher, Mr. Ortez, says, I'll miss you, Cassie. And then he gives me a dime, a free crank, and we have sex. I do up the crank with Mama and her boyfriend, Rick. She throws me the keys to her wheelchair and says, Baby, go get us a chicken bucket. So I go and get us a chicken bucket. On the way back to the trailer, I stop at Hardy's liquor store. 
I don't want to look like a dork carrying a chicken bucket into the store. And even though Mama always says, never leave chicken where someone can steal it, I wrap my jacket around it and hide it under the ch wheelchair and parking lot. I've got a fake ID. It says my name's Sherry and I'm 22. So I pick up a gallon of Tito's, a box of Whippets, and four pornos. Mama says that Jerry Butler's got a real wide dick, but the whole time I'm in line, I'm thinking, please God, let the chicken bucket be okay. Please God, let the chicken bucket be okay. The guy behind me is wearing a t-shirt that says mustache rides 10 cents. So I say, all I got's a nickel. He says, you're cute. So we go out to the van and we have sex. His dick's okay, but I've seen whiter. We drink up most of the tequila and I ask him, you wanna whip it? He says, fuck no, that shit rots your brain. And when he says that, I feel kind of stupid doing another one, but then I remember what mama always told me, baby, be your own person. Well, fuck yes, so I do another whip it all by myself and it is great. Suddenly it hits me, oh shit, the chicken bucket. Sure enough, it's gone. Mama's gonna kill me. Those motherfuckers even took my jacket. I can't buy a new chicken bucket because I spent all the money at Hardee's. So I go back to the trailer, crouch outside behind a bush, do all the whippets, puke on myself, roll in the dirt, and throw open the screen door like a big empty win. Mama, some Mexicans jumped me. They got the chicken bucket plus the rest of the money. I look around the trailer. Someone's taken all my old stuffed animals and Barbies and torn them to pieces. Fluff and arms and heads are all over the place. I say someone did it, but the only person around is Rick. Mama is nowhere to be seen. He cracks open another beer and says, what chicken bucket? Well, that was a long time ago. Rick and I got married and we live in a trailer in Boren. We don't live in a trailer park though. In fact, there's not another house around for miles. But the baby keeps me company. Rick says I'm becoming quite a woman, and he's going to let Mama know that if we ever see her again. Keep it going for Ruby. Thank you, Ruby. Very nice. And definitely keep checking us out here every Wednesday night for more open mic. Um, up next tonight, we've got Adelaide in the house. Adelaide? Adelaide? Awesome. Y'all make some noise. Give it up. How you doing? Yeah, that's your loudest. How y'all doing? You doing good? You doing good? Cool, cool, cool. It's Wednesday, my dudes. So, we about to do some crazy shit. I'm about to rap for y'all. I write songs. I haven't been here for a long time, but, you know, I've been working. Decided to come back. Shout out everybody at Kava. Shout out everything like that. Thank y'all. Thank you. Let's do it. This is called First Things First. I'm about to cuss a lot, but we all grow. Wait. This is awkward.
Alright, I'ma hold this shit, sorry. Yeah, my jack's fucked up. I don't know who jacked it up. Damn, man. Help me. Fuck it, leave it. First things first, first things first, okay, yeah, fuck the basics, they're the worst, I know some petty bitches that be trying to do me dirt, Hey, hold on man, my tiny life I still put first, I don't care about Grammys man, I'm trying to put on for the earth, Hey, Superman, why you trying to speak the truth, shut up and just listen to a soul 100 proof, Hey, fuck the plan, Wing it till I'm through. Respect me when I'm dead, just like all the pussies do. Hey, don't make me go back to my bullshit. We broke up and I don't wanna go back to it. I was a motherfucker still, and matter of fact, matter of fact, I'm about to go and I ain't never gonna answer back. Look, you look mad. I could be a killer, but I think that shit is whack. I'm attached to this money, and I think that shit is facts. I'm a super man with this money, I'm attached. Yo, bitch, look like Michael Sarah doing drag. I look like Johnny Hill directing all you hags. Yeah, every day it looks very sad, but I don't care. Because I'm doing what I want, fuck, where it's at. Man, I'm nasty, I can yak, yak, going black, black on this track, track, doing this shit, playing this shit like it's black, jack, flipping this beat like it's flat, jack, doing this shit until I'm at Baghdad. Every day, year round, like an almanac. I don't care why anybody wanna do some shit because I got my fucking pride, so I do it for myself. Yeah, that's my fucking time. Yeah, my fucking nasty, I can yak, yak. I got all these knickknacks for all you knickknacks to go learn a backpack. Ha ha, that's straight facts. I'm done with this like blackjack, flip this beat like flapjack. So I'm on my way to Baghdad, damn that. Bro, I just spit a straight crack, meaning I eat this beat like Pac-Man, and I'm still not done, damn. Why am I speaking like I have a couple fans? I don't know, but here's the plan. First things first, motherfucker. First things first. First things first. Fuck the basics, they're the worst. I know some petty bitches that be trying to do me dirt. Hey, hold up, man. My tiny life I still put first. I don't care about Grammys cause I'm trying to put on for the earth. Hey, Superman, why you trying to speak the truth? Shut up and just listen to a soul 100 proof. Hey, fuck the plan. I'ma wing it till I'm through. Respect me when I'm dead, just like all the pussies do. Hey, don't make me go back to my bullshit. We broke up and I don't wanna go back to it. I was a motherfucker still, and matter of fact. She might call me, but I'm not gonna answer back Look, homie, don't be mad Most you people wanna talk I don't really like to talk I just wanna pop off Have a bomb with Molotov Get topped off That's my kind of mazel top Then in the night Watching some geezer named Gandalf Damn, I'm stupid Out of all the shit that I've been saying My only advice is to put on for the music Cause first things first First things first First things first First things first, shout out Kava. First things first, you know you heard it. First things first, first things first, first things first, first things first. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It took us a while to get here, but we got there. I got another one for y'all. Y'all want to hear another one? Oh, uh, I just made a song. I just released it. It's called 5 a.m., so it's out. My name is Adelaide, by the way, A-D-L-E-I, if you want to look it up. Fate. 
I just want to catch up and share some love. She gave me raw emotions Sometimes they mess me up and leave me in the darkness Sometimes emotions take me to my conscience They give me the options Do I want life or a coffin? Purpose Who needs a purpose? You only get peace on earth when you desert it Music I want love and music Because the world left me alone and so heartless I see demons each and every day They beg me to stay But they don't wanna stay And they wanna run away But it's so strange They don't wanna change It's 5 a.m. in the morning and I'm still inside my head Opportunities knocking But I'd rather waste this step My mom wanna see her sunshine But I'd rather chill instead Now my problem's trying to win But they don't ever win Cause when I wake up I remember the plot from all of these thoughts Saying yesterday is my old friend And today's gonna see its end I won't give in I can't let my life go so I'ma, I'ma save me I'ma save me Now when I get up, I'm cocky that I'm gon' survive and survive Cause I ain't gon' lie, I've just buried my pride and it's buried alive If them Hollywood stars are the same stars in my skies then Well I'ma get in my ride and put my drive towards tomorrow With one foot on the gas, I ain't looking back the back view mirror don't exist when you're moving so fast Advice from some nomad singing things always last So why waste your time when it's worth more than cash? You need to wake up Purpose, who needs a purpose? You only get peace on earth when you deserve it Music, I want love and music because the world left me alone and so heartless Brian 
Bomb, accompanied by Alec Dyer. Any of those people in the house, shout out if you are. Nope. Joe Shelton here. I miss some Joe. Chloe is here. No, Chloe is here. Chloe? Yeah. All right. There we go. Y'all put your hands together for Chloe. Thank you, Chloe. I just wanted to check that. Hello, my name is Chloe. That rhymes, and that's fun. I wrote some poems. Uh, this one I wrote today. It's about me. It's really short. There's a sparkle in my eyes, something I've been missing. The green streak, wildness, a nature about me I'd forgotten. I watch myself in the mirror when I can. She's so beautiful. That's it. Uh, this is about teaching. In stepping back from center stage, there's allowing. Allow the light to fill someone else's mark. Allow the shadow to bend around my forms. I do not need the centrality. I don't know if I ever did but creating space for others to claim what they have always been allowed to own is only growing my love for myself. Thanks, yeah, I love teaching. This is about hacky sack, I also wrote this today. I wait in the setting sun for a friend, watching others playing a game and being friends together. I watch trick shots bounce off shoe sole edges against the golden shimmer of behind cloud lighting, bent legs and bodies jumping together for sport and for love. It's 11-11, make a wish. That's not part of the poem, it is actually 11-11. <laughs> make a wish! <laughs> uh, I wrote this one, this is a little bit longer. I wrote this one and performed it a really long time ago, and then I have revised it a lot of times since, which I honestly don't really do. I have 16% battery. I need to plug my phone in. Focus. Uh, I don't often revise my poetry after I write it, so this is different for me. This is about, uh, like, my chakras. The energetic centers up and down my spine have each a feeling, a belonging, a time and place, a space, a name. My root is the base of a tree, the foundation, rose petal home, a pivot point full of direction, full of promise, ever moving, long-term residence line shelves on sunset painted walls alongside the come and go, the everyday, the grounding, growing, downward release. My sacral is a narthex, the entering, in between, the waiting and the walking, the feeling, gathering, greeting, welcoming, Pitted black cherries and blackberries, my sacred nature, rushing of desire and waterfalls, winding staircase through half-hidden doorway, shortcut, stone passage two and four. My solar plexus is a greenhouse, plants thriving with the warmth, the light, vegetables for nourishment, 
Daffodils for joy and delight, fresh fruit for juice and pleasure, drizzling and watering, ladder through hole and floor, down, down, connecting. Rooftop opening, afternoon, sunlight streaming, beaming the steam-filled glass panes on warm evenings, inviting life to stay a while. My heart is a library, recently dusted, books organized, the century, my heart beating, knows where to look. No dewy and no decimal, just instinct and knowing, open space, up and down, all these stairs, ease. Sunlight streaming in big windows, knowledge sent through and around fingerprint wobbles, kneecaps, shoulder blades and veins, self centered and sure signaling, all rightness around, aligned, channeled, even, steady, childhood favorites read over and over, large and comfortable chairs, options and opportunity, reading light always on, around and through and thoroughly and a part of. My throat is a stage. Single spotlight, center, a microphone, a place for speaking truth, telling stories, jokes, singing loudly, quietly, unabashedly. My voice resides and passes through at the same time. Creation and candor, questions and curiosities, discussion, anger, righteous or not, feeling and knowing and explaining, loving, all that can be heard, all that could be told. My third eye is a rooftop, strung lights and lanterns overlooking city living. Lights and sounds in the dark, noises and faces in the day. So tall, bird-like, perched and ready, observational, present, hands off but paying attention, prepared to fly in any direction with not a moment's notice. My crown is a gate, wrought iron, tall as a tree, this boundary of my earthly property, this holding of my spirit, my ability to be alone and turn away visitors, delicate and strong, lockable, reinforced and amplified, ornate and mine. This high rise, this tower of me existing inside of my body and within my spirit changes every day. Elevator doors opening wide as I move up and down, in and out of many rooms, one home, the rain washing away sun stains, the wind blowing free the dead leaves, new and old tears, the windows wiped clean, shining again, warm and dry, safe from storms. This home, seven stories high, within, beyond me, faultless tower. Thanks. And now I'm going to play you a song by Talking Heads. Can I just... No, I'm not sure at all. I'm down on everything. I haven't practiced this at all, so give me a second. We're just gonna go for it, actually. Head in the sky, 
It's okay, I know nothing's wrong Nothing's wrong oh, I got plenty of time Ah, you got light in your eyes Thanks, guys. Y'all give it up for Claude. Thank you, Claude. Oh, yes. Get some drinks. Support the bar so we can keep doing this for you every Wednesday. And always tip your bar keeps. Up next, we do have Joe Shelton in the house. Y'all make some noise for Joe. Can you hear my heartbeat? <laughs> All right. A towering 510. That's not the tender 510 either. It's an actual so what 510. All right. I got a silly song and then somebody else's silly song. This is mine. Jocelyn. <clears throat> Jocelyn. Jocelyn. You shoulder check me good and hard, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. You knock me down out in the yard, though you like to push and shove. I thank heaven for your love, honey, Jocelyn. Hey, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. You put the forearm in for play, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. Went from X-rated to X-ray. Well, you treat me awfully rough, but I can never get enough, Lady Jocelyn. Hey, 
Alt, bite, and no bark. That one's gonna leave a mark. A slap, kick, pull, stick. I must be a lunatic. A stop, now that hurt. I forgot the safety word. Jocelyn, well, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, you know you shook me all night long. Jocelyn, Jocelyn, to my favorite Zeppelin song. Though I'm bruised, I am unfazed, just confused and a little dazed. My name Jocelyn, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. You gave me a Jocelyn, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. Hey! One and one half minutes well spent, I hope. So I'm working one I don't have ready yet. It's called the Greg Abbott song. And the refrain is, die, 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 roller Nazi, die, die. Which translates in German to the Greg, the. Uh, but anyway, the reason I raise that is that uh, Willie Nelson, uh, because of Greg Abbott's policies, has decided to have his usual Texas 4th of July celebration outside the state of Texas. And so I'm going to sing a little Billy Nelson song called Three Days. <clears throat> Three days I dread to see you arrive. Three days I hate to be alive. Three days filled with tears and sorrow Yesterday, today, and tomorrow There are three days I know that I'll be blue Three days that I always dream of you And it does no good to wish these days would end Cause those same three days start over again Three days I dread to be alive Three days I hate to see you arrive Three days filled with tears and sorrow Yesterday, today, and tomorrow there are three days I know that I'll be blue Three days that I'll always dream of you And it does no good to wish these days would end Cause those same three days start over again Three days I dread to see you arrive Three days I hate to be alive Three days filled with tears and sorrow Yesterday, today, and tomorrow Three days Three days Thank you, Cabo Bar. Much love. Human friendship. Joe Shelton, y'all. Thank you so much, Joe. All right. Up next on the mic tonight, y'all. We got Ryan Foster in the house. Let's make some noise for Ryan Foster. Give it up. I got uh, two original poems today. Oh god, okay, yeah, the lights are bright. <laughs> uh, this first one is on religion, innocence, and crime scenes. Uh, before I start, I will definitely not be taking up the full five minutes, so you only have to deal with my face for a little bit. So this is on religion, innocence, and crime scenes. God looked down his nose at me that day and said, My child, I did not make you for this. And I guess he was right. I heard your rabbit heart beating in bright red. In the next room, my parents spoke in hushed whispers. 
You left a trail of red and blue lights on my thighs, lured me into a life of crime, created your own beginning as I faked an ending. Call your pleasure vandalism, my apprehension police, my heartbreak a conviction, my shame a prison sentence, life without parole. Later, my mother would pull me aside and comment on the red that bloomed on the side of my neck and I would stumble back to my room in shame. Then you would scold me, tear into me, demand, why didn't you just lie? But I cannot bear to lie to those who mean it when they say they love me. I welcomed you into my home, arms wide open, but you sullied my childhood bed, painted my bedroom walls a bright, garish red, and somehow the color didn't bother me. Thank you. And the last one is when my professor hands me a fossilized skull in a box. When my professor hands me a fossilized skull in a box, he tells me you were a creature similar to a pig, except your head is the size of my hand and your body was likely close in size to a small dog. He talks of evolution and fossil records as I run my fingers over little teeth. Imagine the way they must have chewed the ancient grass you dug your snout into hands, navigate to the mandible where I think of your mouth opening, wondering what you sounded like in life. My touch finds the orbital bone next, then as my professor speaks of how rare it is for an animal to be preserved in such a manner, I think of your eyes and how they must have turned one day to the sky, your gaze following as you found the same sun that now powers our machines and heats our homes. No, I can never imagine your final moments, but I can imagine what you felt like in life when the bones were still bones and you laid down to rest under the prehistoric sky and you breathed the same air I breathe today and you loved and you loved and you loved. Thank you. That's Ryan Foster, y'all. Keep it going for Ryan Foster. Oh, yeah. Keeping it rolling here is Poetry Open Mike Asheville every Wednesday night right here at Sovereign Kava. Coming up next tonight, we got Luna. Luna, do we have Luna? Luna going once, going twice. I know we got John Langmack in the house. Give it up for John. Hey everybody, I'm going to read some poems tonight. This is from my book, God Bless the Roadkill. <clears throat> Kudzu titans and pink sunset dragons. The monsters that haunted my dreams as a child. Fearing less my own mortality and the more the growing clarity of my smallness and the vastness of things. As I grew, my ways of speaking and carrying myself became more polished and refined. But my dreams were still plagued by the same nightmares, a vastness one could see in the night sky. Now further steeped in the great mystery of being anything at all. The thought alone can be a venom, paralyzing both mind and body. How can I move when I understand nothing? When I'm so small, when I matter so little? You could build a life out of these questions, but it would not make a warm home. The solution is the same you found as a child on a dark summer night in July. Run through the grass. Grab the firefly and watch it light up in your hand. Tackle your friend to the dirt and laugh giddily in your exuberance. Life needn't be a desperate clinging to meaning. Life can be play, dance, laughter, joy, friendship. How you fill your home is up to you. The human search for meaning is both a work of beauty and a fool's errand. But there is such joyous laughter in the dance between the two. Thank you. <clears throat> this next one's called The Homeless Poem. The homeless poem has no place to go. The homeless poem sleeps in trash cans under stacks of unread papers. 
They live on a steady diet of mics and friendly promises. The homeless poem sets up at the corner of the page and begs for readers. Just a line or two, anything helps. We divert our eyes and quickly rationalize. I don't owe this poem anything. I only have so much attention to give, and yet our mood has soured. We drive by the homeless poem who gives us a wave and a smile that brings a frown to our face. It's really not right. There should be people to read poems like them. The system has failed them. We want to say more, but as we pull up to the light, another poem holds up its prose and we stare down at the wheel. After we drive off, the poem wipes the sweat from their brow, packs up their metaphor and meaning and rhymes, heading off towards an open mic, a stranger's ear, or any bridge of connection they can walk across. Thank you. I'm gonna read one from uh, more recent uh, times. My phone, yeah. Let's see. I pretend my paper money is real so I can keep all my stuff. I pretend that stuff makes me feel safe. I get home from my job where I pretend to work. I'm pretending one more promotion will make me happy. I give my wife on a, a kiss on the cheek. It's part of her act where we pretend we still love each other. When our kids get home from the big game, I sit down and tell them the best way to pretend to live. I pretend I'm not miserable. Soon after, my wife and I wish the children good night and retire to bed. My wife pretends to have a headache to keep my sad body off her. And I pretend I don't care, as my life turns to ash in my mouth. I close my eyes tightly as I pretend my soul isn't screaming for any kind of release from the perfect hell I've created. My wife cries softly beside me. I pretend I don't hear it. You can fool your neighbors, the cool kids, or your boss but you're never, you'll never fool yourself. Pretend as hard as you want. Pretend until the love has gone cold and the kids move out. Pretend as the seconds wind on and the buzzer sounds, but you'll never counterfeit your truest self. It's deep in there begging for a turn at the game, but you've handed it an un unplugged controller again. It's really so damn simple. Stop pretending everything's okay. Stop pretending you don't want to run. Stop pretending you aren't afraid. It's the first beautiful baby step into the life your soul's been dreaming of. You've always been perfect. There was no need to pretend. No need to pretend away feelings, the gay, or God's love. I'm not pretending. You are perfectly loved, blessed, and safe. Thank you all. That's all I'm got for you all tonight. Um, the book is uh, God Bless the Roadkill. If you're interested in it, come talk to me. John Langmack. Ten dollars. together for Jason.
Today I'm going to do a cover of, uh, do you guys know the band Stars? It's like a band from Montreal. I'm going to cover one of their songs called Calendar Girl. If, if I am lost for a day, try and find me. If I don't come back, then I won't look behind me. All of these things that I thought were so easy just got harder and harder each day. December is darkest. In June there's a light But this empty bedroom won't make anything right While out on the landing A friend I forgot to send home Who waits up for me all every night Calendar girl who's in love with the world Still I Calendar girl Who's in love with the world Still I I dreamed I was dying As I so often do But when I awoke I was sure it was true I ran to the window Threw my head to the sky Said whoever is up there Please don't let me die But I can't live forever I can't always be One day I'll be sand On a beach by the sea Pages keep turning I'll mark up each day with a cross And I'll laugh at all that we've lost Calendar girl Who's in love with the world Stay alive Calendar girl Who's in love with the world still alive? January, February, March until May, I'm alive. June, July, August, September, October. I'm alive November, December And all through the winter I'm alive I'm alive I'm alive Thank you. All right. Keep it going for Jason Chen. Thank you, Jason. All right, y'all, just a few more for you tonight. Um, oh, yeah, up next we have Quinn. Where's Quinn? I just saw Quinn all the time. Quinn, awesome, cool. Uh, kick ass. Y'all go ahead and put your hands together for Quinn. Thank you. 
Next, we got Mark Hudson. Put it together for Mark Hudson.
Cheers. 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 All right, y'all. I'm going to end on a couple little chunky ones. All right, this one's called The Future. Always thinking about the collective future. Sutures, goobers and lubers, long underground tubers, newbies, noobs, dudes on lewds with scooby snacks, slack but stiff, stretchy throughout the past. Messy, fussy, wussy, must he be seizing? Got a sweet lease on some smoky Gouda cheese. Gentle, squeezy, lemon, easy peasy, yummy Reese's geeses. All right. Slack and relaxed, overflowing with alternative facts, attempting a Mac attack, big special sauce. Saucy, mossy, 
Jeffrey, Chaucy, hanging in Canterbury. Tails between legs, razzy jazzy, blue cherries with watermelon berries. I carry sherry and fairies to be released. Teasers. Lying conditional responses, fucked up correspondence, despondent and corrosive. Responding responsibly, coordinating accordingly, storied history. I wish could be different, I missed it. Miffed, muffed, skipped, hugged, loving hoes and sluts, tight butts, something to hold on to. You're gonna slumber and mumble, watch some Bryant Gumble. Grumble. All right. That's all I'm going to do tonight. Thank you all for listening to me. Thank you for the time. Give it up for Caleb Beiser. Tip your bartenders. Peace. And keep it going for Mark Hudson. Thank you, Mark. All right, y'all. Moving right along here. Do we have Sarah Crow? Sarah Crow is still here? Awesome, yeah. Y'all, please welcome Sarah Crow. Give it up! to this beat and I haven't rapped over it before <laughs> so I think it's long enough uh, so just gonna wing it but this is not a freestyle so I guess I'm not really winging it uh. <laughs>
Thanks for hanging around tonight, y'all. I'm gonna leave y'all with some poetry. Thanks so much to all the incredible performers tonight for hanging with us. Keep in mind, we do it every Wednesday night. Sign up at 8 o'clock. The first animal to dream under a large moon and long gone stars 500 million years ago sees the weather from another day a language unfamiliar reports the first human feet touch the surface nothing is isolated every dream departs at the after party a woman who I met once a year before tells me I was in her dream last night. I was warning everyone about the small animals who were in danger. I pleaded for people to help them. Then I met Tom Rayworth and told him who I was. I know, he said. Astonished, I remarked. That's cool. And he replied, no shit. Forest Elegy number one. My friend told me of the 30 year old owl whose tree died and had to be cut down. And inside the hollow of the tree, they found more than 300 cat collars. remarked. Head bowed in silence, my arms lift with the first notes of the song. My body becomes wisps of blue smoke, ribbons from winter cigarette, stale moist earth, aroma of death, the hope of the moon, colorless deer in its light. Then I rain a long time, then turn to snow, to ice. Open voicing. Thank you. Ghost drummers gather in ranks at city's edge. Drums muffled in fog like damp wool. As cantores peer smoking from white caves. On rooftops of city towers, money launderers serve drinks to derelicts and dilettantes make out with thieves. Orphaned poets wash windows for paper and pens, antidotes, their only possessions while ruined salesmen hawk their poems, one for three, two for fives, in the streets of music, saxophone, piano, other world voices, yesterday's poison washes to the sewers, and all the people at the laundromat absent-mindedly wash their souls with bleach. Joe Jawano blows blue glass into death. <laughs> and, um, I'm gonna do this old uh, Mary Oliver poem. This is Dogfish. 
Some kind of relaxed and beautiful thing kept flickering in with the time and looking around. Black as a fisherman's boot with a white belly. If you asked for a picture, I would have to draw a smile under the perfectly round eyes and above the chin, which was rough as a thousand sharpened nails. And you, and you know what a smile means, don't you? I wanted the past to go away. I wanted to leave it like another country. I wanted my life to close and open like a hinge, a wing, like the part of the song where it falls down over the rocks, an explosion, a discovery. I wanted to hurry into the work of my life. I wanted to know whoever I was. I was alive for a little while. It was evening and no longer summer. Three small fish, I don't know what they were, huddled in the highest ripples as it came swimming in again, effortless, the whole body one gesture, one black sleeve that could fit easily around the bodies of three small fish. Also, I wanted to be able to love, and we all know how that one goes, don't we? Slowly, the dogfish tore open the soft basins of water. You don't want to hear the story of my life. And anyway, I don't want to tell it. I want to listen to the enormous waterfalls of the sun. And anyway, it's the same old story. A few people just trying one way or another to survive. Mostly, I want to be kind. And nobody, of course, is kind or mean for a simple reason. And nobody gets out of it, having to swim through the fires to stay in this world. And look, look, look. I think those little fish better wake up and dash themselves away from the hopeless future that is bulging toward them. And probably, if they don't waste time looking for an easier world, they can do it. <laughs> Folks, what was said to the Rose tonight was said to me here in my soul. What was whispered the cypress, so it's strong and tall. What was told the jasmine, so it is what it is. Whatever made sugar cane sweet. Whatever was said to the inhabitants of the town of Chigil in Turkestan that makes them so handsome. Whatever lets the pomegranate flower blush like a human face, that is being said to me now. I blush. Whatever put eloquence in language, that's happening here. Great warehouse doors open, and I fill with gratitude, chewing a piece of sugar cane, and love with the one to whom every that belongs. Thanks for coming to Open Mic tonight. Let the beauty we love be what we do. Um, 
Many thanks to all the staff here at Sovereign Kava, all the performers tonight, and um, our audio engineer, Chris Madrano. That's right. I'm your host, Kalen Beiser. This has been another great Wednesday here. We hope to see y'all next time. Check out all the great shows this weekend, and uh, shout out to IMAVL as well. And uh, y'all, uh, peace and love, everyone. We're dealing. Who's that man?